Hi, let us proceed with our discussions regarding the process of conducting literature review, which is extended from our previous videos. So far, we have covered the first two stages about searching for the references, taking record of the useful information, classify them under certain subtitles, and then use the features of the Microsoft Word under the table of content. You specify the levels in order to register those subtitles under the tables of content. And then use the navigation panels helping you to quickly go to the respective subtitles. This is an example of how it is being done. Not only we mentioned about how it is being done, we also discussed about when do we stop this stage. It is either due to the point of saturations, or probably you can consider from the targeted amount of words as a result of taking notes from the literature review. Since you are still at the early stage of your literature review, the more information you get here, the merrier. It gives you a clearer picture regarding the topic that you need to do the literature review. Along the way, as you read, you gain the relevant technical knowledge. You know what it's all about. If you feel that you have sufficient basic knowledge related to that particular topic, which is good enough for you to start with the literature review writing. Whenever you feel ready, you can pause this process and try to enter to the next stage. I will call the second stage as the classifications, where you group the topic under different subtitles. Remember, while doing the literature review, the process is very complex. While you are reading and understanding the content, you will need to prepare yourself to be able to trace the relevant information later. Therefore, you will try to minimize the tasks that you need to do at any stages so that you don't get messed up. Now, coming back to this stage here, the ultimate goal is for you to classify the relevant information. Therefore, at this stage, you don't have to consider anything regarding the sequencing. You just need to consider putting the relevant information under the right subtopic and then get the tables of content system work out within your words file. Let's say now as you read along, you find any relevant statements which could be useful for you in the literature review later. You may copy down the statements, search for the relevant topic, and then paste it under that particular topic. And then remember, to give the citations using the endnotes. This will be the only thing that you're going to do at this stage. Gather as much information as you could. You may also highlight the point by underlining the words so that later when you come back revisiting those statements, you can quickly draw your attention towards that particular point. This will save you a lot of time to read through the text. Entering next stage, you are working on the basis of the Microsoft Word file that you have developed. The main difference of second stage and the third stage, it will be it is properly arranged and sorted. By this stage, you have a clearer picture how you want to do the literature review. At least by now, you know more or less the breadth and the depth 
of the topic that you intend to do the literature review, since you have read a lot from the papers. Now imagine yourself. How would you like to construct your literature review? You need to plan the sequence of giving the informations. Which informations is to be disclosed first, and then followed by which informations, and so on so far. Imagine yourself is trying to produce a review paper. You think about the structures of the papers, how you would like it to be delivered. Then you will need to rearrange the subtopic that you have classified in the proper orders. Get all the informations ready in the proper sequence. For example, if you see the sequencing of this topic here, although it seems to be quite well classified, but this may not be suitable or may not represent the actual ways how you want it to be presented in the paper. What you will do next, it will be reorder the subtopics. How would you like it to be presented in your literature review paper? What is going to be presented first, followed by what, and then what, and following. We are talking about arrange in proper sequence for the subtopic. Once you have the subtopic arranged, now you're going to plan how you're going to write it under that particular subtopic. Remember in the previous stage, you only do the rough classifications of the informations. Very often, there are several references which are referring to the similar point. This is when you're going to group them together and arrange it in the proper sequence. This will be the sequencing on the content part. In another word, you do the sorting and rearrangement in the bigger pictures and then narrow down to the content. Again, you will imagine how you would like it to be presented. What content that you're going to present first, followed by which, and then subsequent, and etc. As demonstrated here, this will be the subtopic. And then you intend to talk about the problems and the phenomena, and then the students' perceptions, and so on, so far. You will observe that the amount of information that you gather might not be consistent. Some of them have a lot of references, while some others have limited. It doesn't matter, because at this stage, you haven't started writing. You are still in the stage of planning the writing. You should have a picture of how you intend it to be presented along the way. And by doing this, it helps you to plan how the information are being disclosed so that it is easier for the readers to understand. You need to think of a way that you progressively construct the understanding of the readers in the proper sequence that can best help you to deliver the information or message so that your literature review is easily comprehensible by the readers. Sometimes you may have some opinions of your ideas generated as you read along the papers or while doing certain planning. You realize that there are some important points which you can consider presenting in your literature review. With that, you can simply put certain notes there. Since it is your personal opinions, 
or not yet have any references to talk about the relevant point. You don't have the citations from the endnotes. It doesn't matter. At least you have an idea that probably this could be a topic of discussions when you talk about your literature review. Now the ultimate goal of this stage here is for you to plan how you would like to present your literature review, particularly in terms of the information to be disclosed at the sequence that you feel the best helping the readers to understand. Along the way, you may find that probably you have certain lacking. For example, you feel that you can discuss more on certain topic, but you have limited references. This will be the gap that later you will need to fill. Now, this depends on you. If you find that there is a lot of gap, this gives you an indication that the information that you have acquired here at the second stage during the classifications may not be sufficient. It may not give you sufficient information to you to complete your literature review writing. Under such circumstances, probably you can go back to the second stage and proceed with reading, taking the record, classifying under the relevant subtopic, and come back to this stage later. Or if you find that the gap is quite little, you can consider filling in the gap later while you are doing the literature review writing. Remember that this stage is for you to do the planning how you intend to have it written. The sequencing and the classifications here, it is still not the ultimate versions for your literature review. Based on my personal experience, your final versions of your writing can still deviate significantly from what you have here due to various factors. But at least at this stage, you don't feel yourself lost. You know what you are doing and you have an idea what you intend to do later. These are the preparation words that you have done in order to help you to go smoothly while you are writing the literature review. It is okay that there are certain parts at the end of the day will not be used, since a lot of things still unforeseen until you really come to the writing. But at this stage, within your best capacity, you get yourself prepared all the relevant information, whichever you deem to be appropriate and required, Get them ready, so that is going to be handy for you while writing the literature review paper. I guess this is another unique process that most of the students missed. I believe a lot of students, while they start writing, they don't have the clear pictures and also without any proper planning how the entire literature review should look like. This method is more systematic and you will feel that you are in control. And then this feeling of you are in control, although it is a psychological factor, but it leads to huge difference to the persons who are doing the literature review. You feel more confident and you don't easily get fed up. What normally students do they read along, taking the notes, and straight away they consider how they are being written. As they read more, whenever they encounter certain important points, they try to add in straight to the writing. I'm not saying that this should not be done. Personally, I find this to be more challenging. It will require you to have really high level of memory that you can recall a lot of things, can quickly trace the relevant papers, and also can produce really good writings. 
For normal people like me, I do not find it working. It is either your quality of literature review being compromised, or the progressions of your literature review later very slow. And most likely your writings is going to be quite messy, not really properly continuous. Your point jumping here and there, and this will be reflected to the reader later. As they read along, they will find your information jumping here and there as well. This is going to make your literature review very hard to understand and hardly readable. Also from the psychological part, since at the same time you're going to read the papers and produce your literature review writing, the pace of writing for your literature review will be relatively slow. Then you have a feeling that your literature review work is not progressing. This is going to bring you an impact in terms of your self-confidence. Also, at the same time, your head filled with a lot of information, which you're not sure when you're going to use it or whether you're going to use it. Then you have to store a lot of information in your head. So many things that you feel you would like to express in the writing, but when it comes to the writing, it ends up to be not quite coherent and consistent. Eventually, you start at the literature review. The main problem of this method is that you don't do the preparations before you do the writing. Normally, I would not recommend you to do so. Therefore, the process that I'm proposing to you is First, you do one single task at a time so that you stay focused and make sure yourself in control. Second, you have to prepare for the writing. You might not have 100% information ready before you start writing, but at least a good majority of them are more or less there, which is sufficient for you to make up a simple framework, as well as the structures that you're going to deliver during your literature review writing. Before you start writing, you should have a clear picture what are the contents to be delivered throughout the entire paper. Only then you start writing.